Hi, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Kim Barefoot in the Kitchen. I'm Kim and this is my fake cooking show. On this cooking show we cook real good food for real good people in my real small kitchen. Today we are cooking monster cookies. Actually we're baking monster cookies. Uh, I was asking my daughters if they had any preferences or any ideas about what I should cook or bake next on my fake cooking show. And they said, oh, you really, really should do the monster cookies. And I said, monster cookies, what do you mean? And they said, you know those cookies that you used to make for us when we were little? We loved those cookies. They were so good. And to tell you the truth, I was like, hmm, let me think back. I made so many cookies. What they remembered about the monster cookies where they were full of peanut butter and M&Ms and chocolate chips and raisins. And one of my daughters remembered that they had oatmeal in them and another one could remember if they did or not. So anyway, today we are making monster cookies. And I really hope that this becomes a family favorite recipe of your family as well. The recipe is easy. All of the ingredients I'm sure you already have in your pantry. I'll give you a rundown on the ingredients first and then you can assemble them and then hit play again and we can bake together. So this recipe calls for one and a half cups of creamy peanut butter. It's a lot of peanut butter, but when you taste these cookies in the end you'll know why they need so much peanut butter. Two and a half cups of coconut sugar or two cups of brown sugar. And they pack differently into the cups, right? So that's why there's a difference. And these cookies are nice and moist. They're crispy on the outside, but they're really chewy on the inside. And that's why you need the brown sugar. And we're not using any white sugar in these at all. You need a third of a cup of melted coconut oil or five tablespoons of melted butter or melted butter substitute if you're doing these vegan. Melted butter substitute in these works absolutely wonderful. Three large eggs or flax eggs or your other egg substitute. The flax eggs works really well in this uh, recipe as well, but you might need to cook them just a little bit longer. So you really have to do one cookie for a test batch and see how long you need to, to cook it if you need to cook it for uh, maybe nine or 10 minutes instead of the eight two teaspoons of baking soda. It sounds like a lot, it's not a mistake. It is two teaspoons of baking soda in this one. I've also added one teaspoon of cream of tartar and that's totally optional. I doubt you have cream of tartar in your cupboard. Don't go out and buy it just for these cookies but it's something that I often add to my cookies and it just, they just rise up a little bit higher I don't know, just adds a little bit to something. So that's why I use cream of tartar, but absolutely not necessary. Your cookies will turn out just fabulous without it. Two teaspoons of vanilla extract, two and a half cups of quick cook oats or old fashioned oats. What I've done is I'm using two cups of the quick cook, not the instant. Do not use instant. There is a difference between instant and quick cook oatmeal. Do not use the instant. Anyway, I digress. I'm using two cups of quick cook and one cup of the old fashioned rolled oats just to give it a little bit more texture. Three quarters of a cup of chocolate chips, three quarters of a cup of M&Ms. If you're gonna use three quarters, I say use one cup. It's up to you. Three quarters to one cup of each of those. Half a cup of raisins if you like raisins in your cookies and a little bit of sea salt to sprinkle on top because there's nothing better than sweet and salty, right? Okay. The oven is going to be preheated to 350 and we are going to cook the cookies, bake the cookies for eight minutes each. Okay, let's get going. The first thing that we want to do is peanut butter to our mixing bowl and that was one and a half cups of creamy peanut butter. There we go. 
we're doing well so far. We're going to add it in our sugar and the oil, coconut oil or butter or butter substitute, whatever you're using, that goes in now as well. If you don't have coconut oil, you can use another oil that is neutral flavor. And we are going to give this a mix until it's well combined. And those arms get a workout. Smells good already. Mm. Totally looking forward to these cookies. Okay, we're going to add our eggs, three of them. Three of them gives a nice richness. Oh my goodness, when I went to get eggs this week to do baking, I rarely buy my eggs at the store. I usually buy them at the market. And I didn't have time to go to the market, so just down the road from me is a lady that sells them on the side of the road. And I got my eggs and she put them in the bag because you take them home in a plastic bag. Already you know where this is going, don't you? Usually I can get the eggs home without breaking any. And when I do, I always give myself a little pat on the back. Like, wow, you did really good. Because they come home on my motorcycle, right? And she tied up the bag. And I remember thinking, well, she's tying those eggs in there really, really tight. You know, I, I should have had my own basket that day. Anyway, I got home and she had tied the bag so tight that out of 10 eggs, I got five that weren't broken. But, oh wow, what can we do? Okay, now we're going to add our baking soda. Here it is. And we're going to add vanilla. How much vanilla? Two teaspoons. Two teaspoons to me says one tablespoon. You guys have cooked with me enough times to know that I love my vanilla. Two teaspoons is fine. I really like vanilla. So I use one tablespoon in my cookies. Smells good. Now, this is so fast. It's the fastest recipe either, ever. There goes our oatmeal. Okay, we're ready to add our chocolate chips and M&Ms and raisins if you're using them. So this is the consistency that you want your cookie dough to be. It will easily form a ball. This won't be a, it's a fairly soft ball, but that's what it looks like. Okay. And I hope that you saved a few M&Ms just to put on the top and make them look extra pretty. And let's get these all mixed in. Easiest cookies ever, right? These are good rainy day cookies to make with your kids too. They're easy to make, fun to make with the little ones. Okay, excellent. Now, hopefully you have your baking sheet ready, whistle hat, or with um, parchment paper because we are already ready to put these onto the cookie sheet. If you've got time, if you're not in a hurry and you let this sit for a half an hour to really meld those flavors together and let the oatmeal absorb some of the liquid, these will taste even better. But if you're in a hurry to get them in the oven and out of the oven, then go ahead and cook them straight away.